Hi everyone. The formulation of a research problem is the most crucial part of your research journey as the quality and relevance of your project will entirely depend on it. The process of formulating a research problem consists of a number of steps and today I will take you through these steps. Because working through these steps presupposes a reasonable level of knowledge in the broad subject area within which the study is to be undertaken and the research methodology itself. A brief review of the relevant literature helps enormously in broadening this knowledge base. Without such knowledge, it is difficult to dissect the subject area clearly and adequately. If you do not know what specific research topic, idea, questions or issue you want to research, which is actually not uncommon among students, going through the steps will prove to be of immense help in deciding what you want to find out about. Let's go through the step number one. It is imperative to identify a broad field or subject area of interest to you at the very beginning before starting out on your research journey. Ask yourself, what is it that really interests you as a professional? I think it is a good idea to think about the field in which you would like to work after graduation. This will help you to find an interesting topic and one which may be of use to you in the future. For example, if you are a social work student inclined to work in the area of youth welfare, refugees or domestic violence after graduation, you might like to take research in one of these areas. Or if you are studying marketing, you might be interested in researching consumer behavior. Or as a student of public health, intending to work with patients who have HIV or AIDS, you might like to conduct research on a subject area relating to HIV AIDS. Or you might just be interested in becoming a teacher. At the outset, you will realize that all the broad areas I have just mentioned, just like youth welfare, refugees, domestic violence, alcoholism, have many aspects. The more you think or read about an area, the more sub-areas you will be able to identify. For instance, let's say the main subject area that you identified in step 1 was alcoholism. In step 2, you may dissect alcoholism into sub-areas such as profile of alcoholics, the causes of alcoholism, the process of becoming an alcoholic, the effects of alcoholism on the family, community attitudes towards alcoholism, or the effectiveness of a treatment model, etc. In step 3, select what is of most interest to you. It is neither advisable nor feasible to study all the sub-areas that you will identify. From your list, select the issues, questions or sub-areas about which you are passionate. Your interest should be the most important determinant for selection, even though there are other considerations. One way to decide what interests you most is to start with the process of elimination. Go through your list and delete all those sub-areas, issues or questions in which you are not interested. You will find that towards the end of this process, it will become very difficult for you to delete anything further. You need to continue until you are left with something that is manageable, considering the time available to you, your level of expertise and other resources needed to undertake the study. Once you are confident that you have selected something that you are passionate about and can manage, you are ready to go to step number four. For example, in step number three, you may say that the sub area that is of most interest to you is effect of alcoholism on the family. In step number four, you have to think about raising research questions. Ask this step or ask yourself at this step, what is it that I want to find out about in this sub area? Make a list of whatever questions come to mind relating to your chosen sub area. And if you think there are too many to be manageable, go through the same process of elimination as we just discussed in step number three. So a question that you might like to investigate in step number four is what impact does alcoholism have on marital relationships or how does it affect the various aspects of children's lives or what are the effects on the family's finances step five start formulating the objectives both your main objectives and your sub objectives now need to be formulated based on your research questions now the main difference between objectives and research questions is the way in which they are written research questions are obviously questions and objectives transform those questions into behavioral aims by using action oriented phrases such as to find out, to determine, to ascertain or to examine. Now some researchers prefer to reverse the process. That is they start from objectives and formulate research questions from them. Some researchers are satisfied only with research questions and do not formulate objectives at all. If you prefer to have only research questions or only objectives that is fine but keep in mind the requirements for your institution for research proposal. For example, in step number five, you may have the main objective as to finding out the effects of alcoholism on the family, whereas your sub-objectives could be to ascertain the impact of alcoholism on marital relationships, 
to determine the ways in which alcoholism affects the different aspects of children's lives or to find out the effectiveness of alcoholism on the financial situation of the family. Step number six, assess your objectives. Examine your objectives to ascertain the feasibility of achieving them through your research endeavor. Consider them in the light of the time, resources, both financial and human, and technical expertise at your disposal. Think about the work involved, the time available to you, the financial resources, your research, your research supervisor's expertise in this area. Ideally, I always recommend my students to think of them as smart objectives. Are they specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely? Finally, step number seven is going back and giving yourself a final consideration to whether or not you are sufficiently interested in the study and have adequate resources to undertake them. Ask yourself, am I really enthusiastic about the study? Do I really have enough resources to undertake it? Answer these questions thoughtfully and realistically. If your answer is no to any one of them, then reassess your objectives. Think uh, about whether you are really interested in the study. Do you agree with the objectives? Do you have the resources? Do you have the technical expertise? There are many considerations that you might have to think of when finalizing your research topic. However, keep talking to your research supervisors, talk to your peers, ask them how they, they finalize the research problem and that might provide you with some guidance. In my future videos, I will discuss more examples on how to going about a main subject area and then finalizing the sub areas from there. I hope this video was useful to you. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe and I will see you soon with my next video. Bye for now.